This might be the prettiest arcade stick that I've ever seen. At least the prettiest affordable one. I'm also attracted to this retro aesthetic they've captured. This is the 8-Bit Do Arcade Stick. It was made with fighting games in mind, but could also be for anybody who just wants to play arcade games on their Switch or on their PC. Which, honestly, isn't really me. Or it wasn't really me. But this thing surprised me. It has a lot of little features that you would never expect from a third-party Switch peripheral, especially one that's this cheap. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm trying to make the latest TikTok banger and something just isn't right. Maybe it's me. Maybe I need to learn a little something about music production. For less than $10 a month, you can learn a new skill or sharpen that one you're already working on. They have courses ranging from graphic design, animation, creative writing, marketing, filmmaking, and yes, even music. Like for example, learn how to mix music with Young Guru. And you can just try it for yourself and see how you like it. Right now, the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So go on over there and sharpen that skill you've been trying to learn. I figured it out. I just need to add more butts. 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 I've given up on you. Butts. Butts. I talk about 8-Bit Do a lot because I genuinely think they make some of the best controllers on the market, specifically for retro stuff. They send me controllers every once in a while, but they've never given me money or even asked me to talk about any of these products. So this is all just coming from me, no talking points for better or for worse. For whatever reason, I feel like I have to disclose that because there's always comments that say that this is an advertisement. It's not an advertisement, except for Skillshare, that was an advertisement. Like I said before, I absolutely love the look of this thing. It's got the NES style down with its gray shell, black gloss accents, red buttons, and even dark gray bottom, tapering down just like an NES. It even includes a similar notch on the bottom, but this one isn't useless. This one houses its USB-C port for charging and wired play and a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle. This is awesome for two reasons. One, the cable can be locked into place with this little cutout here. And two, the dongle has a home. You don't realize how much you want a feature like this until it's gone. Sony should really take note here for their gold and pulse headsets. But anyway, it's much easier to run this thing wired. The included USB-C cable is massive. I just wish there was a compartment in here to wrap the cable up. There's plenty of room inside. This thing is pretty hefty. It feels like one solid piece of plastic, but like many arcade or Byte 6, the inside is pretty minimal. All of the connectors to all of the buttons are removable. You can swap these buttons out for your own 30 millimeter or 24 millimeter arcade buttons. And 8BitDo claims it supports virtually every arcade stick ever made, and then lists a couple of arcade sticks that I've never heard before because I don't know anything about fight sticks. You've got the wrong long haired white guy. This controller is meant to work with the Nintendo Switch and PC. The X on here doesn't mean Xbox, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to try this thing with my Call of Duty box. Ah. Fiddlesticks. But swapping between the modes will change the label on each of the buttons, which glow red under the black faceplate. I love this feature. I wish more controllers did this. Hell, I wish more controllers had knobs to switch modes. Sometimes it feels like you're summoning Exodia when you have to change modes. The other knob here changes what the arcade stick controls, either the left stick, the D-pad, or the right stick. I'm not sure who's gonna be opting for the right stick, but since you can control the left stick, that means this could be used for Smash Brothers if you really wanted to. 
There are people who use fight sticks for Smash, but that certainly isn't me. I could only see this being used for Ryu, Ken, or Terry mains. All the other characters would kind of be better off with a right stick or a C stick for tilts or smash attacks. But this customizable stick means it will also be easier to adapt for certain arcade titles, if you want to turn your Switch or PC into a makeshift arcade cabinet. It also has a sync button, star, and heart buttons. Here's something interesting. I just found out that the star button, which is usually the share button, is actually the turbo button by default. It's a toggle. So you press this and then the button you want to correspond it with and it'll turbo that button. On the top right of the device, it has two buttons that look like player one and player two buttons on an arcade cabinet. But these are actually programmable macro buttons. This arcade stick is fully customizable with 8BitDo's ultimate software, just like the SN30 Pro Plus is. This means you can program macros onto these top two buttons if you want to cheat in Street Fighter or something. All of the other buttons are also fully customizable with the ultimate software. You can even remap the share and home buttons to be more macros. Now, the macros have gotten better since the ultimate software first came out. You can now change the timing between button presses. The macro doesn't have to fire out every press at light speed, but it's insanely hard to program those timings correctly for, say, Smash Brothers, or anything other than a traditional fighting game, really. Ah, uh, the D-pad uses the D-pad for the macros. Damn it. It's not as simple as, say, recording your own macros with button inputs. I'm still waiting for some sort of functionality like this to be available in the Ultimate software. Give us a record button that we can map, similar to the record button that's already baked into the Gully Kit controller. Another thing to note when customizing this controller is that the cool glowing button labels under the black faceplate don't change if you change around all of the buttons using the Ultimate software. They're baked in for just Switch or Xbox controls. So. Honestly, there's really no difference between using the button mappings on the Ultimate software or just using the button mappings in the Switch's own settings. But this is still something we love to see. The more customization options that they give us, the better. I mentioned the wireless dongle before, but that's only for 2.4 gigahertz mode. If you want to connect this wirelessly to your Switch, it has Bluetooth baked into it. So you don't need a dongle at all. 2.4 gigahertz mode is only there if maybe your PC doesn't have support for Bluetooth version 4.0. This kind of seems a bit overkill, a feature they totally didn't need to include, but it's pretty awesome that they did. Using the 2.4 gigahertz dongle also makes things way easier if you ever get frustrated with the Bluetooth syncing process, which often happens with wireless devices. 8BitDo only lists Switch, PC, and Steam support, but it also works fantastic on Mac which is great news because sometimes I like to emulate games on my Mac. <laughs> it also seems to work just fine with Android. So I'd imagine you could also get this to work with Raspberry Pi too, if you wanna build your own arcade cabinet around this. Although I have not tested that yet because that seems like a nightmare. The 8BitDo arcade stick is on the way cheaper end as far as fight sticks go at only $90. It's been a while since I've gotten my hands on an arcade stick for the Switch, but they're usually way more expensive and pretty premium feeling because of it. I paid a decent amount of money for that Hori one back in the day. That thing was massive, and there wasn't really a focus on customization. You were kind of stuck with what you bought. Mayflash makes one that's pretty cheap, even cheaper than this one. But come on, look at that thing and then look at this thing. None of them really compare. The plastic casing is rigid, like that indestructible Nintendo plastic. The joystick feels very premium. The clicks are super satisfying, like a real arcade stick. The buttons feel good to me, maybe not super clicky like an actual arcade cabinet's buttons, but you do have the option to swap them out for more premium ones yourself. I think including these to help cut costs was probably the better choice. They feel good to me, and people who are gonna want those perfect arcade buttons are gonna be the ones who are gonna wanna customize them anyway. 
It's like keyboard people, you want the Cherry MX switches. Anything else you're gonna wanna replace. Overall, I'm super impressed with this thing. It's not something that I ever thought I would have wanted, but I'm very happy that I have it now. It comes down to the aesthetic with its retro style and Moog-like knobs, its functionality with all of its different connection options, its button mappings and its customization, and the attention to detail that focuses on a great user experience. It's probably one of my new favorite gaming accessories, even though I have zero intention of playing any arcade or fighting games anytime soon. It's just been such a joy to mess around with. And now if I have to break out extra controllers when people are out here playing Smash Brothers or Duck game, I can wow them with this thing. So what do you guys think about the 8-Bit Do Arcade Stick? Again, this is not something that I ever thought I would have wanted or needed, but after playing around with it, it's freaking awesome. And I'm glad to have it in my kit now. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with it other than have it on display looking pretty. And the occasional arcade game, maybe this thing will get me into Street Fighter. Maybe I'll actually build a little main cabinet out of this. That's never gonna happen. That's too much work. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Add me on Twitter and all this other social media garbage. I always get crap for calling it 8-bit do. No, do, I say do. It's do, I asked them a while ago. So I have definitive proof that it's, that it's do. I also think it's do to prevent any legal problems. <laughs> Anyway, we got new videos all the time, at least once a week. We also got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden, and we got our live podcast over there. That also goes to Wolfden Podcast, that YouTube channel. We also have youtube.com slash Wolfden Clips if you want to watch just clips of some live streams. We have a lot of content, but it's spread out across a couple of channels because YouTube doesn't like it when it's all on one. But of course, the most important thing that you could do to help support us through all of this YouTube turmoil is just subscribe to one of those, at least one of those. Make sure you're subscribed to at least this one so that you know when the videos come out and turn on notifications if you wanna know when every single video comes out. And share this video with a friend. A friend who maybe is into fighting games. Maybe they're really into arcade games and they've been looking for something like this because this thing is awesome. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.